uh, and, and I did get a lesson on how to turn the slides. Yeah. So hopefully yeah, I, I can yeah. do that. So as, as a uh, venture fund focusing on this space, we spend the time and follow the trends in longevity science and market. Uh, and our scientific director, Dr. Jose Navarro, also a partner, put together a lot of the data that we're going to follow. And I'm gonna just going to start to say I come from test and measurement background. Uh, and uh, I am really encouraged to see this biomarkers consortium. Because when I first uh, started learning about longevity, I was saying, hold on a second. You have two different labs and they get 10 year difference in measuring my age. How can that be? I mean, we have very precise measurement. This by the way, the system my last company developed for wireless testing. And, and all the labs in the wireless space, we have a standard. You send the lab a standard. And if it's off by more than plus or minus 2 dB, that's a problem. And then we all got together periodically to, f to define the standards, the test methodologies. So I think this consortium, maybe I'm projecting my own desires on it, and I don't know what your high level goals are, but hopefully we can define what it means to measure. I, I know it's a much more complex space, right? But what does it mean? What does, uh, what does it mean to age? How do we measure it? Can we get all the labs to give us the same results? Maybe it's a multi-dimensional measurement. I don't know. But that's kind of what I would like to see. And as I'm staring at this exponential, at these exponential curves, right? I'm staring at them one day, and it occurred to me that there is something else exponential going on. And that exponentially, as we age, we get exponentially smarter, more resourceful, more productive because we have this life's experience. And how much will the world change if we get, if we continue that? And because isn't it a shame that just as we get going, our lives get snatched away from us? But what would happen to the world if people like Greg, you know, Steve Horvath, all of us just kept going exponentially, right? And, and the world would change quite a bit. It's even hard to imagine. And so H Jose put together, actually we have 20 to 30 slides just diving into, and we look at Nobel Prizes, why? Because they, are, they mark true breakthroughs. And these are Nobel Prizes, these are breakthroughs in the science uh, related to aging. And then we put on, overlaid the, the Nobel Prizes with the logos of the companies in our space. So what are they working on? So we have a bigger presentation to connect the companies, what they're working on, to the science and the prizes, and to the hallmarks of aging, which is kind of interesting. It's a ton of work, and I hope to bring Jose here one of these days so he can go through it. But for the science, you know, um, it's a science is amazing. And I have full confidence that you guys here, the scientists here, are capable of solving aging in my lifetime. The problem is the money. And the problem is uh, regulatory barriers. Uh, I think Joe touched upon politics earlier, and, and I was listening and thinking, yeah, if you don't get politics right, nothing else is going to work. So we're, we're going to have to chip away that it's not the science that's the limiting factor here. So you know, investment is happening. And here we have some data. And if you click on the link uh, in our slides that's on the bottom left, you can get to a table where every single point is listed in, in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and these are the actual investments um, that, that happen into longevity biotech, longevity medicine space. And in, interesting to note that in 2021, 18% of all VC money went to longevity. Now that is disproportionately high. This is a tiny nascent industry. So I think that's important. Now this money comes primarily from wealthy people, from billionaires and just wealthy people. And you can see a lot of familiar names here. They invest in companies directly. They invest in conglomerates like Juvenescence. Uh, they invest into philanthropy, of course. Um, you know, so um, we see Sam Altman, who invested in Joe's company. Uh, he actually uh, focused a big spotlight on this industry 
because he's in the mainstream news. He didn't even invest that much compared to the three billion that went into Altos, right? But it's, an, it's actually a lot for one company, but he is the figure. Uh, and, and now I, I, as I'm right, trying to raise the fund uh, and the people I talk to who are real estate investors, they don't know anything about longevity and it's always a problem to try to educate them. Now they see Sam Altman investing in longevity and now they're interested. So we kind of have to, um, to get there. Now we see um, uh, Dmitry Kaminsky who actually uh, d did well within Silico. He was a very big investor in Silicon and then he created this uh, deep tech group that, is, um, that has created uh, this portal. And this is a database of the longevity economy, if you will. And he covers 50,000 companies, 10,000 investors, 1,000 R&D centers. And this is live. I've played with it online. And you can pretty much uh, get charts and reports by sector, you know, say uh, uh, cellular reprogramming, or you can get the reports by uh, location. Say I want to go and see in, in Ukraine what is the longevity economy there and who's working there. So it's a pretty interesting tool that I, I plan to spend more time with it. And this tool predicts 33 billion economy three years from now. Now, uh, that's, that's a pretty big economy and it has uh, a lot more than just what we're trying to do here, which is age reversal. And when we look at just, let's say, what is the available spending on the type of stuff your companies and your research develops. So we take disease treatment. Say if we can genuinely reverse someone's biological age and they don't have to get cancer, that money that they're now spending on treating a disease can instead go on proactive medicine, on preventing that disease. And then there is other, there's disease, there's alternative medicine, there's cosmeceutical, everything young people never spend money on. It's only the aging people. And, and we just accounted directly for $1 trillion. It's not 33, but it's, it's, uh, it's a it's a pretty good number. And so, um, you know, we're, you know, we, we are a small first time fund. We are now, we have some investments. We're now evaluating companies uh, in their funnel. We call it a funnel. And these are just some examples. We have marked our investments with the little leaves of the logo. These are already invested. Uh, and since I only have seven minutes and I don't know how much more I have, I'm not going to go through any of this except for one. I just want to see yeah. uh, uh, one more minute. OK, so I want to mention the Nautix because you see it's in three columns here. And it's a really cool tool. And we have Lou Hawthorne here, who is the uh, founder and CEO and the inventors of these nanots. And it's a different type of medicine. And Lou, you can speak for yourself. But I'm just going to uh, say one thing. It's, it's not adding anything into the body, it's taking away bad stuff. Inflammatory particles, mm -hmm. it can unmask cancer cells uh, from the immune privilege that they create. So for example, it can absorb STNF-alpha. And Lou is now trying to kick off uh, three human studies with three major hospitals in the US, which is Mass General Hospital, Cleveland Clinic, and Mayo Clinic. Two of them will be studying cancer and one sepsis, which there's no solution for sepsis now. So pretty amazing technology. It's a little nano, the 120 nanometer nano machine that, that can be designed for any target that we want to take out of the body. There's, there's just so much else interesting here, which I don't have the time for because I have maybe less than a minute now. Then there are companies that don't treat hallmarks. They are platforms and biomarkers. And I think, Ash, uh, you are after me. I have your logo here on the lower left. T. Sarlap is doing something really cool uh, in trying to predict cancer, but I'm going to let you do that. And finally, I just want to ask this community to please consolidate the number of conferences. Mm -hmm. And maybe, ex because I'm going nuts trying to figure out where I need to be every week. But also, we need to expand this. Um, and I had a conversation in the hallway. Uh, just now is how we need to bring the outside world in here because here we are a res resonance chamber. We're talking to each other. We all get excited. But when I go to raise my fund, I talk to people who invest in real estate and they're not excited. <laughs> and I need help changing that. So Great. that's Thank all. You. I
out of any of the ones that I have made in December. We're now trying to make it into more of a longer week uh, so that the ones that are back to back uh, can have like a, you know, a little bit more coordination amongst it. But yes, that's a point well taken. Um, okay, uh, questions, yes? Yeah, so about the trillion numbers, which we have heard for the last <coughs> 10 years, everyone always sees the number doubling. I think it's probably short by one-fifth, uh, because you are focusing only on the biology of longevity. What about the determinants of health from the societal behavioral perspective that we know weight 60% of the world, uh, let's say, cake uh, given us by the WHO? Is anyone interested in exploring that side of investment or just because all of the conference are only on that side? Of it's story, a huge right? economy, right? We just did simplistically say, well, let's say we don't have to spend on cancer. But you're absolutely right. I mean, and if there is this exponential function, right, where we can make the population more productive, more of us stay alive longer and we get exponentially smarter. You know, how much will the economy grow in that case? Yeah, which I think answer one of the questions of the first question of the morning, right, about who's to address, and it's to address us before we get the disease, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. I think it's huge. Yeah. Yes? Uh, thank you for the shout out uh, on Nanotics. I really appreciate it, uh, putting us in all those places on your shirt. Um, we're having a hell of a time raising money relative to when we weren't. We, you know, a couple years ago, we had a lot of problems left, and it was much, much easier to raise money. We don't have any technical barriers now, and it's just hard as hell out there. What is your experience actually giving money or you know, investing in companies, but also bringing in investors into your fund? What's the source of everybody freezing in place, and how long is this going to last from, from your your sense of it. Yeah. Is it getting better? Um, you know, sometimes you're in the heat of a battle and it's frustrating and you don't think you're getting anywhere. Uh, y you know, we're trying to watch what works and what doesn't. We talk to different people. We try to present the science to some. Others are motivated just by profit. We could tell them about nanotics and uh, try to get them excited. So you kind of have to break through to every person and, you know, s have that feedback sensing and keep keep going but I think as a group we need to really expand who we talk to you know like uh, Greg you were at Freedom Fest for example you were the only one there talking about longevity right can we get more of these companies to go to uh, freedom minded you know conferences like that and and bring in a bigger world. Um, just to speak on the previous comment on the trillion dollars a year, um, by 2029, the U.S. spends an impact its federal budget every year um, on yeah, adults yeah. age 65 okay. older. So um, really true trillion. Yeah, no, no, but we didn't even count hospitalization. So yeah. it's a very conservative number because we don't need to be hospitalized if we can prevent yeah. these diseases. So it's actually a much smaller number if you don't wait for that disease. I should have mentioned that it doesn't include hospitalization. Okay. okay, I want, I do want something. I am tired of going to Quest at 7 a.m. I want a lab at home, a little get gadget at home that I can take a little blood every day and give it a drop of blood and it'll tell me what my treatments are doing every day. We need better resolution of uh, biometrics, right? Bi biomarkers. And then also like more things like the ones that you can use at home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't want to I don't want to so ship anything. I just want to get a drop of blood and give it. And I would like an at home blood test too. <laughs> Why can't we have that? We should have that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really interesting <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to work on it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll team up and fund it together. Yeah. I would invest in that. <laughs> All right. Great, you have some free commitment to you if you work on this topic. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Fiona. This is great. Uh, thank you.